Today, a CDC panel will meet to review the FDA's decision on allowing both Moderna and J&J &J booster shots. More than 15 million people were inoculated with the first dose of the Johnson & Johnson immunization. The CDC study found that initial doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine are only 71% effective against hospitalization from COVID-19. That's compared with 93% for Moderna's inoculation and 88% for Pfizer's. Dr. Dan Baruch helped develop the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and he joins us now. He's a physician at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston and director of the Center for Virology and Vaccine Research. Um, the FDA is recommending, doctor, that people who receive an initial shot of Johnson & Johnson's, Johnson's single-dose vaccine seek a booster two months after the initial dose. What about those who got their shot even before that time frame? Is it not effective or minimally effective at this point? Uh, well, thank you. Um, actually, it's the opposite. Uh, the FDA guidance based on the data that was presented is that uh, people who receive the J&J &J vaccine should get a boost at least two months after. And uh, what we know is that if you get a boost with a second J&J &J shot two months later, then it boosts the efficacy level to exceptionally high levels to 94% in the United States. What we also know is that if you wait, if you wait until six months to boost, then the boost of antibody titers is even higher. So basically a boost two months works very well, but if you wait longer, uh, if you have a boost at six months, it works even better. So doctor, what are the advantages of receiving a J&J &J booster? Well, um, a lot of the studies are still underway. What we know is that for J&J &J recipients, if you receive a J&J &J booster, then it has proven efficacy to very high levels. Uh, the FDA has also authorized um, uh, any form of so-called mixing and matching, which allows people to choose a different vaccine for boosters. And there is interesting data in which um, I might be, there might be some benefits for people who received an mRNA vaccine to then get a J&J &J booster or people who received a J&J &J vaccine to get an mRNA booster. But we don't have efficacy numbers for those approaches yet. Um, so to that point, I want to play a little bit of Dr. Anthony Fauci uh, on CBS Mornings this morning. Gail King asked Dr. Fauci whether people should get the Johnson and Johnson booster shot. I want to play his response and then you can react afterwards. It really depends on your own individual preference and consulting with your physician about where you fall in, for example, your age or your gender or whether or not you're a man or a woman. There are different, I mean, the, the risks for adverse event scale are really very, very rare and very, very low. So uh, I want to get your take on what Dr. Fauci said. Um, he seemed to indicate that there are sort of different factors that you might want to consider. Um, you know, what's your take on that? Well, first, I'd like to emphasize that all three of the vaccines authorized in the United States are very, very safe and very, very effective. Uh, but the exceptionally rare serious side effects uh, have some different uh, age and gender um, uh, balances. Uh, and so the so, so first, we're talking about very, very rare uh, side effects. But for example, the myocarditis seen with the mRNA vaccines is more prevalent in young males. The thrombosis seen with the j, &J vaccine is found more commonly in young females. And so some people may choose to take that into consideration. Other people may choose convenience. In other words, what might be available at their local pharmacy down the block. So I do think that having a mix and match approach uh, does allow people different choices. So let's talk about um, the role that you played in the development of the J&J &J vaccine. Uh, is there anything that you would have recommended be done different today before the vaccine received emergency approval in February earlier this year? Well, I think um, uh, certainly if there was if there was a way to go even faster and to get vaccines approved even faster, then that would have resulted in even more lives saved. All right, Dr. Dan Baruch, thank you very much.